All right, welcome to the Life Given Podcast. I'm your host, Isaac Lopez, and it's great to have you here with me on this midweek edition of uh, our show. It's I've got to admit, I've been a little behind the eight ball this week. I kind of uh, came down with a sore throat, then Moscow got hit with a lot of smoke in the air, uh, and um, that just kind of destroyed my voice, and I ended up coming down with a cold. So if I sound a little stuffy, that's because I am. And so if you want to come back on Friday, I'm sure I will have a better, better tone and a clearer register. But today I don't even want to like have a super long episode. I want to flush out something that I mentioned in Friday's episode um, about boycotting the NFL. And it's, it's something that a lot of people have discussed doing, uh, especially more so now since the beginning of this NFL season, and since all of the social justice issues have been cropping up in the last seven to eight months. And that's, it seems to be the only thing anyone can focus on, and the NFL included. They have really focused a lot of their time and attention on things that are not football. And it raises a lot of questions in my mind, just with other people, just in other people's minds, why can't you just play football? And I have to clarify before we continue on that I don't mind it when uh, people voice their political views or opinions on national television or just because they work one job, I don't think that they can't speak their mind. But um, really, I think that there is a certain limitation when you have a very specific vocation like football or say, um, just for instance, in this podcast, it is a current issues, current events podcast, and would it make sense for me to then start talking about and breaking down, say, NFL games every 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 episode and every other week. It just wouldn't fit the description of this podcast, right? And you guys would probably end up sending me messages or asking me, what are you doing? And that's kind of my reaction to the NFL. I don't mind once again, if players, you know, have a political opinion, if they have a response to someone um, who's in office that they don't agree with, and they they have a platform uh, to speak from and with. Now, before we get to that, I just want to talk about the actual boycott itself, because I, I feel like this has probably been the most frustrated fan base uh, of any national sporting league um, in recent memory. Uh, the fan base that makes up a lot, the fans that make up a lot of the NFL fan base, just football lovers, are very tired of the political virtue signaling, of the um, everything but football kind of mantra right now. And you would think that because this is at an all-time high, this frustration, this anger and anxiety is at an all-time high that something could be done. Now, there is a lot of wonder at how much, or rather how few people watched Thursday Night Football last week when the Chiefs and Texans faced off in the season opener. This is a spotlight game, and apparently ratings were very, very low. <clears throat> but then on Sunday, there was a bounce back. And, you know, the NFL is actually going to be able to make up um, for all this. Uh, I think they can get away with a lot of this virtue signaling because so many people want distractions from a very topsy-turvy culture right now. A lot of people are just want some sense of normalcy. So they're clinging to whatever, even if that whatever being the NFL is throwing crap on your screen. So uh, some of the ratings that have come out uh, from so some of the TV ratings have shown that um, there have been some broadcasts that took, that definitely took a hit. Uh, NBC Sunday night is coming from uh, Austin Karp, uh, a tweet that he put out. He mentioned that uh, NBC Sunday night saw a 15% decline, um, which normally, if you follow the NFL, Sunday night is a huge spotlight for these uh, 
national broadcasts. But um, in some of the Fox national windows and regions, um, they saw a bump, like an eight to seven percent bump. Um, and then the, there is this CBS single header that took a 12 percent decrease. So in some cases, some ratings actually went up, even though there's all this talk about people being sick of the NFL and their virtue signaling. And that's something that I now want to discuss and kind of look at um, the reason and give you the reason for why I'm not boycotting the NFL, because I, I really do enjoy watching football. I enjoy um, a lot of the, uh, the lessons that you can learn. I think there's a lot of teamwork involved and there's a lot of courage still involved. And despite the fact, and I'll, I'll share this link with you, but CNN had this great rundown of how uh, every uh, football game played on Sunday had some kind of um, virtue signaling stance. Obviously, they're not phrasing it this way, but um, some teams stayed in their locker for the national anthem. Uh, the NFL did play two different anthems uh, to, I guess, be more inclusive, but they're actually just being, I don't know, very – um, they're just reversing time and running it back to when we had segregation, it feels like, because now there's what they call the Black National Anthem, a certain song that is sung um, before the game. And then they had the National Anthem because they wanted to be inclusive. They wanted to show that they uh, value what the players are saying. And uh, it's called Lift Every Voice and Sing. This is the hymn that was being played, and it's known as the Black National Anthem. And some players kneeled. Some players uh, stood locked arm in arm. If you watch the Chiefs-Texans game, they had a moment of unity um, at the beginning of their game where they both teams went out to midfield, locked arms, and had a moment of silence. Uh, you know, there's some controversy around that moment because it sounded like the fans were booing. Um, I have some thoughts on that, but we can talk about that off the podcast. Uh, but the the um, every single game had some team or some people doing something in protest over police brutality and social and racial injustice. And this is where... I would explain myself further saying that I'm not going to boycott the NFL um, because really we are in the battle for America's soul socially and culturally speaking. A lot is at stake and there are a lot of arenas that are now hosting this battle, this war, and we are fighting for our basic freedom, whether that's freedoms of speech, freedom of religion, <laughs> This isn't necessarily one of those key freedoms, but freedom to have your own opinion, a lot of that is at stake here. And that is happening wherever people are talking about it because that is a platform. And I don't think that you can just write off NFL players as, you know, this definitely doesn't matter because they are just football players. Well, it does matter because as a young man growing up in the United States, you know, I... I never thought and never had idols in the sporting world uh, outside of the fact that I thought they were really cool and I admired their work ethic and what they're able to do. But, you know, many of my friends, you know, I, I mean, I, I do have to confess, I did have some uh, guys that I probably put on a pedestal that didn't deserve to be up there, but many of my friends and many young men like me in that time were told, you know, we should look to these people as role models. And these players are taught that they need to act a certain way and to behave respectfully because a lot of people, a lot of young men and women view them as role models. So I don't think that we can just write off the fact that their opinion doesn't matter. I think it matters in the sense that it has a lot of impact. It has a lot of um, there's a lot of weight to what they say because millions of people are watching post-game press conferences. Many people are watching in-game interviews where these guys are going to say something about social injustice, uh, whether they can uh, explain it clearly or not. Um, once again, this goes back to our discussion of Black Lives Matter a few months ago on this podcast. Uh, I think that there are 
injustices being per perpetrated throughout the land, but we are completely misguided. We have no idea where they are. And our uh, desire to fix the problem is actually just going to exacerbate and create other problems. So uh, these, these men are speaking into a uh, area that I don't think that they're as educated as they should be on it. And that's, that's why I'm going to continue speaking out about what I see. So like with the whole national anthem uh, protest or the protesting social injustice, I think that they need to come out and clarify what they're protesting against. Because you might hear them talk about they're protesting social injustice, but they can't explain what exactly. And they can't explain what, except maybe list the names of black people that were caught in altercations with the police, but they don't know, or they don't choose to recognize that these police in the majority of these cases were justified in most of the conflict that they um, perpetrated on these so-called victims. And so when it comes to realizing that this war is being fought in every arena, I don't want to give up this arena, arena quite yet. I'm not ready to just say, you know what, um, you can go ahead and speak to your millions of followers and millions of viewers, and I'm going to pretend like it's okay, because it's not okay. And I think people that have bigger platforms need to speak up and talk about where these NFL players may be incorrect, where these NFL players uh, may be citing wrong data. I think that's just one way that we can push back against the narrative that so many people are imbibing in. Uh, and so for that reason, <laughs> I'm not going to leave the NFL arena. I'm not going to just call it quits and turn off the TV. Um, and so this is, I, I guess this is the beginning of that, uh, speaking out to what um, these NFL players are standing for. So uh, let me know what you think. Uh, those are some thoughts from a sick person. So it might not have been, it might uh, very well be stream of consciousness, but I appreciate you listening. Uh, and once again, we're on Apple Podcasts now, and that's really fun and exciting. I can't believe that we're, we finally made it after nine and a half months podcasting. It's great to have that uh, little victory. Uh, you can find us on Facebook Watch, YouTube, Spotify, uh, Radio Public, uh, the Life Given News website, and you should tune in over there. We've got uh, a team of contributors that are working their tails off to great, create some great content on the internet um, and some very accurate content. So do go over and look at that uh, and shoot an email to me at thelifegivenreceived at gmail.com or reach out to me on Parlor at TLG Podcast or on Instagram at underscore TLG Podcast underscore. As always, uh, remember that the life that you've been given and the life that you have received includes every area of life. Current events and the NFL is no exception. God bless.